Good day! Welcome to our first topic sa fourth quarter, which is mathematical modeling. So first, uh, chinek ko yung spelling ng modeling. Acceptable daw yung double L na modeling at single L na modeling. Although mostly, yung single L daw ay sa US ginagamit, yung double L is sa uh, rest of the world. So, I guess it doesn't matter naman kung ano yung gagamitin natin. So, I'll stick with yung single L. Now, what is mathematical modeling? I'm using yung book na Mathematical Modeling, a guidebook for teachers and teens by Galbraith and Holton, which is uh, parang guidebook sa math modeling competition, which is based in Australia. So I want to go through their definition of math modeling and compare it dun sa math modeling sa modules natin and explain kung bakit ito yung preferred ko over yung what is available dun sa modules and learning guides na pinrovide sa atin ng PSHG system. So, what is mathematical modeling? Mathematical modeling, as defined by Haynes and Crouch, 2007, this is a process kung saan real-life situations and relations in these situations will be expressed by using mathematics. So, parang ang simple, kukuha tayo ng real-life situation and itatry lang natin siyang i-express or i-sulat using the language of mathematics. But there is a more ano ba, involved definition that we could also use and that is by Verschaffel, Greer, and Decourt. Yes, math modeling is a cyclical process where real-life problems are translated, so may direction, to mathematical language. Tapos pag nandun na siya sa mathematical language, is solve siya within the symbolic system. So yung mga x and y's, yung equations. And then yung result, ibabalik dun sa real-world na situation at test within that system kung applicable siya. And yung parang diagram to demonstrate that is you have the extra mathematical world, which would you normally talk about in real world. Although, hindi naman necessarily kailangan na real world siya. It's just that it's a situation that is outside ng mathematical language. And then, we'll map yung situation to a mathematical scenario para lang masolve natin siya using math tools. And then, yung result, and this is important, ibabalik natin dun sa pinanggalingan niyang uh, scenario at i-interpret natin siya within the context of that scenario using the results ng computations natin dun sa mathematical context niya. To give us a guide kung paano natin gagawin yung translation from the real world or extra mathematical world and yung mapping niya sa mathematical world, and yung back mapping pabalik sa scenario or yung process ng math modeling, I will use this framework given in the same same book. Although, if you will look at our learning guides, it's using a different math modeling framework, which is valid din naman. Wala namang isang fix na ito yung tama. So, it's on us to choose kung ano yung gusto natin i-adapt. And I will be using this for this discussion. So in this math modeling framework, it's steps. So step one, we want to describe the real-world problem. So this would involve identifying and understanding the practical aspects of the situation. After that, we'll specify the mathematical problem. This means that we'll frame the real-world scenario as an appropriate related mathematical question. So parang isulat natin siya as a mathematical statement. Third step, formulate the mathematical model dito natin sasabihin kung ano yung assumptions natin. And hopefully, these assumptions simplify the scenario that we want to solve. We'll identify and choose our variables. We'll estimate yung mga input values natin. And possibly, we'll justify kung ano mga decisions yung gagawin natin. Kung bakit ito yung assumptions, bakit ito yung pinili nating variables. So, kumbaga, ilalagay natin yung parang pader nung scenario within the context ng mathematics niya, na bakit ito yung pinili natin na structure. And once we've done that, we move to the next step, which is solve yung math, yung math niya. So ideally, nakapag-set up tayo ng equations, identify tayo variables, alam natin kung ano yung gusto natin hanapin, and then we'll solve for that. Then kung ano man yung result nung solution na yun, we'll have to interpret it. And we'll consider yung results in terms of their real-world meanings. So this, papasok dito yung importance na alam natin i-contextualize yung mga sagot natin. And then based on the results, we'll evaluate yung ginawa nating model. 
So we'll make a judgment kung okay ba siya, does it need to be modified, is the solution adequate compared dun sa original question or problem. And since this is a cyclical model na pwede tayong notice may arrow at pwede tayong bumalik, pwede tayong bumalik dun sa previous steps, that means that there is, and it is expected, there is an opportunity and it is expected na pag in-evaluate natin yung model at meron siyang problema, then we'll have to go back at any of the steps that we've covered. Maaaring mali yung ating mga assumptions na ginawa, maaaring hindi natin na-frame yung problem ng maayos, maaaring may mali tayo sa computation, and so on. Kasi based dun sa results, hindi nag work yung model natin. And then, once we're satisfied that the solution that we've generated is adequate, it's important that we report this solution. So, since nakakontextualize tayo sa real world, at hindi palaging may tamang sagot yung mga questions na tinatanong natin, we'll have to explain dun sa ating audience kung bakit applicable yung solution, bakit tama yung assumptions na ginawa natin, at hindi lang natin sasabihin na ito yung sagot na number, tapos na. Kailangan nating ma-justify why everything that we did, all the decisions we made, all the computations we did are valid. So, medyo involved ang math modeling. And in fact, this has so many levels na we're just introducing it at our level. At baka hindi pa tayo equipped to, to work on more difficult problems. But we'll just make do with what we know na alam natin mga math functions, na math na tools. But we have to keep an open mind that other real-world problems that we need to solve using math modeling may require higher mathematics. So we're just here to learn about the model, the process, and try to use as much of what we know sa math as possible. But there are two types of modeling according to this resource. First is uh, yung descriptive modeling. Here it says that Descriptive modeling is where real-world problem is specified, a model is formulated, the resulting results are interpreted and evaluated in terms of the needs of the original problem. So one application, siguro ng descriptive modeling is, we want to find out ano yung numbers natin ng infections in, let's say, a month, if nothing else is being changed. And then if we do change some variables, how will that affect yung yung numbers natin sa model. So, that's descriptive modeling. Meron kang gustong ma-describe dun sa results ng modeling mo. Another type of modeling is prescriptive naman. Uh, now, our subject in, in, this, in this course will focus more on the first type. But it's good to know na, may, na modeling din, math modeling din yung tawag, tawag sa mga ganitong applications. So, prescriptive modeling is, yung purpose niya is not to explain or make prediction, predictions about real-world phenomena. But it's more to structure or organize a situation. So, kunyari, gusto mong gumawa ng bagong Pisay Campus sa Pilipinas, saan mo siya ilalagay? So, let's go through an example activity para makita natin yung process natin ng math modeling. Now, after I discuss kung ano yung problem, I want you to pause this video and use the framework that we discussed para try isolve yung problem on your own. So, let's start this discussion by telling the story about my first time to encounter the Filipino dish bulalo. But first, for those who don't know, bulalo, according to Merano 2009, is a beef soup that originated in southern Luzon, composed of shank with a bone marrow that is still intact, garnished with all sorts of leafy vegetables like cabbage, pechay, or bok choy. Now, ito yung recipe na nakita ko sa Panlasang Pinoy, galing kay Banjo Merano. And it is enough for four people now. So it has four servings. Yung problem scenario natin is, yung friend ko, gusto niyang i-prepare yung recipe na to para sa barkada niya. Pero 11 sila sa barkada. So he would like some advice, no? Kung paano niya i-modify yung bolelo recipe from the recipe sa internet. And ikaw, na marunong math modeling, ikaw yung task na tulungan siya. So pause the video and try to give an answer to to that problem. Okay, so let's compare yung ginawa yung solution or ginawa yung approach dito sa problem na to sa magiging solution ko once I apply yung process natin para tulungan si friend 
magluto ng bolalo para sa sampu niyang kaibigan. Eleven sila eh, kasama siya. So, balikan natin yung model natin kanina na meron tayong real world, which we we'll call the extra mathematical domain, and the mathematical world being connected by a mapping or links between these two worlds dun sa context ng problem natin. So, step one, we want to describe the real world problem, and the real world problem would be, paano ko i-adapt yung recipe ko for 11 people? Step two, is specify yung problem within the mathematical context. So, I'll just say that I need to calculate the quantities of the required ingredients. Third step is to formulate the math model. So, parang nandun na tayo sa mathematical world. We'll make some assumptions to guide us in this problem. So, yung first assumptions, yung first assumption would be, kompleto yung ingredients. Hindi ako kulang sa kahit ano. So, hindi ako malilimit ng kahit anong ingredient ko dun sa amount ng food na pwede kong lutuin. So, I could make enough for 11 people. Second assumption is, dun sa 11 na tao sa barkada ko, assume ko na muna na uniform yung appetites nila. Walang particularly matakaw, walang hindi sila karamihan may hina kumain. So more or less, pare-pareho sila ng kakainin na amount. And again, the serving sizes would be roughly the same for all 11 people. Now, I will also construct yung model ko, which will be an equation. And this will be Yung bagong amount, yung amount of ingredients na kailangan ko will be some constant k multiplied dun sa old amount of ingredients. So this is just a scaling problem. I will scale my recipe for 4 for 11 people. So yung constant k that I will use to scale, this will just be a ratio of the new number of people against the old number of people dun sa recipe. In this case, that will be 11 people sa barkada over yung 4 people na original servings nung recipe na pagbabasihan natin. 11 over 4 is 2.75. Next step is solve yung math problem. So, multiply lang natin yung constant natin dun sa, sa required quantities ng original recipe. So, we'll have 5.5 pounds ng beef shank galing 2 pounds sa original. From 1.5 piece small cabbage, magiging 1.375 pieces ng small cabbages. 1 small bundle ng pechay, magiging 2.75 bundles ng pechay. Yung 3 pieces na corn, each cut into 3 parts, that will be 2.75 times 3 or 8.25 pieces ng corn. Yung 2 tablespoons ng whole peppercorn, buong paminta, multiplying by K, will get 5.5 tablespoons ng paminta. 1 half cup ng green onions, ito yung, yung green na maliliit, kinilalagay sa babang lugaw. So from 1 half cup, that will be 1.375 cups na green onions. Yung 34 ounces ng water multiplied by K, that's 2 point, uh, that multiplied by K na 2.75, that's 93.5 ounces ng water at yung dalawang kutsarang patis na optional. Well, that scales up to 5.5 tablespoons ng patis. Okay, optional pa rin. Step 5, we'll interpret yung results ng mathematical computations natin. Within the context lang, ano ba yung makikita natin sa toong buhay? Well, una, siguro mahirapan ka sa Pilipinas bumili ng beef na pounds yung ginagamit mo. So, i-convert na natin yung 5.5 pounds sa kilos kasi mas malamang na kilos yung gagamitin sa Monterey, di ba? So, it's not exactly 2.5 kilos. Pero hindi ka naman o-order ng 2.425 kilos or 2.617 kilos, di ba? Pabatukan ka nung, nung butcher. Usually, ang uh, precision mo nasa 1 fourth kilo na. So, 2 and 1 fourth, 2 and a half, 2 and 3 fourths. So, closest natin is 2 and a half kilos ng beef shank. Yung 1.375 pieces ng small cabbage, hindi ka naman pupunta sa palengke tapos order ng 1.375 na cabbage. And maybe you don't need that much precision. Pero pwede ka bumili ng kalahating ulo ng cabbage. So, it could be 1 and a half na small cabbages or maybe kumuha ka na ng malaking repolyo tapos pahati mo sa kalahate. So, that's, that could be a good approximation. Yung 2.75 bundles ng pechay, walang magbibenta sa'yo ng fraction ng isang tali ng pechay. So, gawin mo ng tatlong tali ng pechay. Yung 8.25 pieces corn, again, you could choose to round this up or round this down. Eh, baka masyadong marami yung sham na pirasong mais. So, gamitin na lang natin walo. Or, if you think about it, kung bibili ka ng mais sa landmark, usually nakabundle sila ng tigatlo. So, baka naman practical yung nine. Yung 5.5 na kutsara ng buong paminta, dun sa interpretation ko, gagamitin ko is 5 tablespoons ng whole peppercorn. Bakit? Well, kasi 
pag sumobra ka sa paminta, hindi mo na yun ma- matatanggal yung lasa niya. Pero kung kulang naman sa paminta yung tinimpla mo, pwedeng-pwede mong dagdagan. So, my interpretation, I would go lower than yung 5.5 tablespoons na result ng computation natin. Yung 1.375 cups na green onions, you again, yung measuring tools natin sa kusina, usually volume-based na cups. So, yung closest ko ay 1 and 1 third cups na green onions. Yung 2.75 pieces ng medium onion, maybe I could substitute 2 pieces ng large onions. It's around the same amount at hindi pa ako magsasayang ng sibuyas. Yung 93.5 ounces ng tubig dun na result ng computation natin. Na-translate ko na siya to something that is easier to measure sa kusina. And we measure with cups for volumes. So that's around 11.5 cups ng tubig. And finally, yung 5.5 tablespoon, yung kutsara ng patis. I will estimate din pababa. Kasi kung kulang naman sa patis, pwede kong tagdagan. Pero pag sumobra, baka sobrang alat na nung, nung recipe ko. So, hindi ko nasundan exactly yung result ko dun sa mathematics na part, yung solve the mathematics. But within a context ng real world, I'll have to interpret yung results na mas practical. Kasi this is supposed to be a real world problem. Eh. Next step is evaluate or validate the model na ginawa natin. And ang paano mo test yung model natin? E di kainin mo yung bulalo. And sabihin mo, ah, matabang ba? Is it good? What changes need to be made? Ano yung hindi nag-translate? So, this could be a cyclical process na babalik tayo, na babaguhin natin yung assumptions natin, we'll make adjustments sa computation, kasi nakita na natin yung result based dun sa evaluation. Now, let's say na we go through another iteration of the process, so masarap na siya, then we report the situation, communicate natin by possibly presenting the modified recipe. Oh, this is the recipe for 11 people, I wrote this down, ito yung mga assumptions na ginawa ko, ito yung changes na ginawa ko dun sa from the results ng computation at justify ko kung bakit and explain paano ko na-approach yung problem. So that's one process of mathematical modeling. Now I also want to talk about what math modeling is not and sadly, ito yung content ng learning guides natin na available. Now, yung, yung laman ng learning guides, hindi naman sila, sa, hindi sila useful. I think they're, they're useful, but I would have to contest calling the topics discussed there as mathematical modeling. So, there are three learning guides on this topic. At gusto ko lang daanan ng mabilis ko ano yung laman nila and explain what my opinions on, this, on these lessons. Kung bakit hindi, bakit ko pinili na hindi sila gamitin for this topic. So, si first learning guide, ito yung laman niya, it talks about making scatter plots. So, it talks about the independent variable, the dependent variable, and kung paano mag-generate ng scatter plot using GeoGebra or Excel. Uh, the problem with, the, with how the lesson is approached here is that it's just asking you to plot points. And based on the shape of those points, pipili kayo kung anong math equation or function yung gagamitin to model that data. The problem is, the data is artificial. It's just x and y values that are already pre-chosen para mag-fall sa isang shape. In this case, a logarithmic function. And then sabihin natin, oh, based on the data of the scatter, the scatter plot, you could see that the log function best describes the data. But it's artificial. Pinili talaga yung points na yan para magmukha siyang, mukha siyang log function. So, there is no real-world problem na i-adapt natin or dadalin natin sa language ng mathematics at i-attempt isolve based on what you know. So, you can see from the previous examples, ganun din. May scatterplot na na mukha ng specific na function na discussed natin before. Mukha na ba siyang line? Mukha ba siyang polynomial? Mukha ba siyang expo? Mukha ba siyang log? So, it's really more on, ah, ito yung points, ano yung pinaka magbumukhang connect the dots na dun sa mga discuss natin prior. That's not math modeling. That's just, I don't know, uh, recognizing the shapes of the functions that we discussed. That has value, but I will have to argue that it's not math modeling. Sa second learning guide, ang sample problem naman ay si PhilHealth contribution. And this is how it's set up sa government. Pag ang sweldo mo monthly ay 10,000 and below, then you contribute 350 pesos a month. 
if your salary falls between 10,000 to 70,000, then you have to pay 3.5% of your salary as premium. So you'll pay between 350, uh, sorry, you'll pay between 350 pesos to 200, 2,500 pesos, 2,450 pesos, sorry. And if you're earning 70,000 above monthly, then you have to pay a monthly premium of 2,450. Then it asks you to plot a graph representing this information as well as a piecewise function that will model yung graph na yun. So is this a math modeling problem? I would argue na hindi kasi there is no problem that is being presented for you to solve. You're just being asked to apply what you know about piecewise functions and linear functions para i-graph yung existing na yung existing na premium structure ng field health. If this were a math modeling problem, then I would present it as field health needs this much money in a year para i-support yung patients niya. Let's make that assumption. Walang corruption. Buo pa yung 15 billion. Nasaan yung 15 billion? Keep, should keep asking that. Anyway, let's go back. Tapos, ito yung demographics ng mga salaries ng mga Filipino employees, Filipino workers. Ito yung percentage ng people na nag earn ng ganito kadami. Ito yung percentage ng people na nag earn from yeah, 10,000 to 70,000. Ito yung percentage ng people na 70,000 and above or maybe 100,000 and above. And the problem would be, what would be a fair premium structure para makaipon yung feel health ng perang kailangan niya at medyo patas yung contribution na ibibigay ng bawat tao. So you make certain assumptions na kung mas malakas sweldo mo, mas naalagaan mo sarili mo at hindi mo kailangan mo hospital as much. So baka hindi naman dapat ganun kalaki binabayaran mo. Kung mababa sweldo mo, hindi ka siguro dapat nagbibigay ng malaki at dapat sinusupport ka ng people na mas mataas yung sweldo, and so on. You have to make all these assumptions and come up with your own premium scheme. And it's possible that you don't have the same premium schemes as other people who are making approaching the same problem. And that's fine, as long as you can define defend the assumption that, that you made and yung ginawa mong structure sort of addresses yung original problem that is being asked for you to solve. So it's open-ended, pwedeng maraming sagot, Pwedeng iba't ibang sagot ay nasolve yung problem and then you'll just choose ko ano yung, yung better dun sa existing na answers that could all be correct. There's no one, there's possible, it's possible that there's no one correct answer. So that's a good math modeling problem. Another problem I saw in the learning guide is i-plot daw using step functions or a ceiling or a floor function yung jeepney fare matrix na if you're familiar, would be pag sumakay ka, for the first 4 kilometers, it's 9 pesos. Then for every succeeding kilometer, magdadagdag siya ng 150. O nga naman. Pwede mo siyang i-represent or i-model using a step function. But is it a math modeling problem? I would argue again na hindi. It's just an application of step functions. Na ito yung existing na uh, fair matrix, paano mo siya ipaplot sa graph? That would be a good application, but in terms of math modeling, walang problem na pinepresent sa iyo eh para i-approach using mathematics. Kung baga, tapos na yung problem, solve na siya, paplat mo lang siya sa papel. If this were to be a math modeling problem, then sabihin ko sa iyo, ito yung number of pesos per kilometer na nagagastos ng jeep sa diesel niya. Ito yung annual maintenance cost pag pinapa-tune up mo yung jeep eto yung kailangan ma-earn ni jeepney driver now given all that information ano yung fair na fair matrix ano yung patas na matrix ng pasahe nakikita si driver hindi siya magugutom at the same time hindi mo naman nilulugi yung mga pasahero mo na sumasakay sa sa jeep so again there could be multiple answers it doesn't have to follow yung current na na fair matrix natin na first 4 kilometers, ito yung babayaran, and so on. So again, there could be many possible answers that will meet the specifications. They could all be correct, they could all be fair. But that's math modeling. It's open-ended. Andun din sa examples yung grading system natin, na again, what is it trying to solve? It's just asking you to plot yung score versus yung equivalent na grade using a step function. It's an application of step functions. But it's not 
it's not a good math modeling problem. Hindi nga maganda yung representation niya eh, na mas mataas ka sa y-axis pag mas mababa yung grade, di ba? So, ano ba to? Sino na, bakit natin, bakit na sa learning guide natin? Doon sa third part ng learning guide, ang makikita nyo naman doon ay supposedly examples sa modeling as applied using exponential and log functions. For example, this one, population na ng town sa relative growth rate of 1% per year, how long for the population to double? This is exactly a problem na sinasagutan natin nung dinidiscuss natin yung exponential functions. Eh. Application siya ng exponential functions. Kung baga, may isang tamang sagot. Pero, if this were a math modeling problem, hindi mo masasabi na 1% yung growth rate per year. Kailangan mong hanapin yun. Usually, the data you will have to deal with this, ito yung population ng town sa 1970, 1980, 1990, 2000. And ano yung problem? Uh, I want to know kung ano yung population sa 2025, for example. So, it's open-ended. You make certain assumptions. Siguro yung assumption mo, the rate doesn't change. It's a safe assumption. Uh, you could also assume na yung size, nung, yung physical size, yung land area ng town, it can accommodate yung kung ano man yung makukuha mong sagot in X years, and so on and so forth. So, and even then, yung makukuha mong sagot, it may or may not be true, which malalaman lang natin pagdating ng 2025, di ba? Not something na, oh, in 69 years, the population will double. That's just a prediction. Again, this is not a math modeling problem. Medyo closed case na to eh. May, may tamang sagot eh. But a real problem like this sa estimating yung population growth, you wouldn't be sure. You wouldn't be, you wouldn't know for certain. And there, there might be some variables that will change as the population grows. So yeah, uh, maybe this is not a good math modeling problem. So, what do I think would be good math modeling questions? Well, I think they would be uh, stated in a real-world context nung hindi obvious na math agad yung, yung tinatanong sa'yo at hindi binibigay sa'yo kung ano yung equation, function, or approach na kailangan mong gamitin para sagutan siya. When you say real-world, it doesn't have to be real, real na totoong, totoong buhay. It could be a context that is outside yung, yung math terms na ginagamit natin. For example, can King Kong or Godzilla exist? This is a yes or no question. But if you say yes, you have to use your math to defend it. If you say no, then you have to use your math to, to defend it. And to bring this to the mathematical world para i-compute yung answers, then you could make assumptions about yung speed of, of neural transmission. Yung ganyang kalaking halimaw ba? Yung signals ba from its brain? How fast will it reach yung yung muscles sa paa para gumalaw siya ng mabilis. Kaya ba yun? Is it physically possible? So you make the assumption that the rules of physics in our universe still apply. Kaya wala tayo nakikita King Kong or Godzilla. Yung bang bones niya sa paa, kayang isupport yung magiging weight ng isang halimaw na ganyang kalaki. Could even make an assumption na kaya pa rin bumuga ni Godzilla ng, ng apoy or nung, nung radioactive na binubuga niya. Sorry, di ko pa ito nakapanood. Ang Godzilla ko, yung mga Japanese Godzilla, bumubuga siya ng radioactive na parang mainit. O, oh, sabihin natin na okay lang yun. Yung bang bones ni Godzilla, yung muscle siya, kaya ba niyang gumalaw na mabilis para lumaban at makasira ng ganyang kalahing ng space? It doesn't have to be a real, real world, but it's an extra mathematical world scenario na may context, may assumptions sa mundo na yun. And we could use yung computations natin to answer this problem. A more serious problem would be something like this. Nag-earthquake nag drill tayo sa Science and Humanities building. Now, how long will it take to evacuate the SHB in an earthquake? And you could have data from the previous earthquake drills that we've had. And we could modify the problem. Paano ko sarado sa front lobby? Kasi may construction dun, di ba? Sbaldumaan yung bata. How long will it take? And make another assumption. Paano ko nangyari ito na nag-face-to-face -face tayo pero meron pa ding COVID at distancing? So, hindi na tayo pwede magkumpulan sa corridors at sa stairwell. So, if we have to maintain spacing during an evacuation, how long will it take to evacuate the Science and Humanities building? 
Now, maaring hindi natin makuha yung tamang sagot because we don't want to know. We don't want to actually do that scenario. But at least, we have some estimates based on a sound mathematical modeling framework para mabigyan tayo ng data kung ah, mukhang masyado siyang matagal at this amount of time ilumilin doon, baka hindi na safe. Huwag na muna tayo mag-face-to-face. -face. Something like that. Or a more serious problem like, what are our estimates for the total amount of solid waste na i-generate ng Metro Manila over the next 10 years? So, ano yung assumptions na ganito pa rin kadami yung generate natin na rate, tapos ito na yung capacity ng mga landfills kung saan sila tinatambak. Wala naman tayong ibang method of disposal for solid waste. We don't have incinerators, we don't have uh, recycling facilities. So, how will this, how will everything look like in the next 10 years? And you could insert additional assumptions now. What if we made some changes sa ating behavior? What if we reduce our waste generation by X percent? So, magbabago yung values natin. So, again, it's open-ended. Baka hindi natin siya matest sa toong buhay or eventually matetest natin siya pag dumating tayo sa panahon na yun. Or maybe we could extrapolate from the annual data na, oh, next year, does the model still hold? In two years, three years, nag-hold pa rin ba yung model natin? So, this would be what I would classify as good math modeling questions. So, I hope na medyo kahit hindi ko sinundan yung learning guides, we have a good idea of what math modeling is and isn't. For the next couple of weeks, you will have time to work on a math modeling problem. And I'll be here for questions and support. So thank you very much and I'll see you sa next lesson natin.